Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Bank America Arena in Seattle, Washington, where the students are starting to come back to campus, digging themselves out beneath mountains of snow. Today, the Washington Huskies welcome in the Montana Grizzlies. Montana, 6-6. Six and six. Huskies stand 7-3, and three, and they have won five in a row. Greetings, everybody, along with Francis Williams. I'm Kevin Calabro. Huskies are very near the end of their non-conference schedule. Francis playing extremely well as they get geared up for the Pac-10. Yeah, they really have. Well, they've really been able to build some confidence. They've won five games in a row. So you want to build some confidence, get some wins at home. But conversely, they were picked to finish fifth in the Pac-10, and their strength of schedule at this point is not the strongest. So you build the confidence in getting some wins, but will you be, be Pac-10 ready as you get ready to face Washington State on January 3rd? That's the question. And Montana, they stand one and five in a row. They are six and six on the year. They've already begun their conference play in the big sky. They got whacked 72-45 to Portland State at Portland State back on the 20th, but uh, some of that could have been because of some personnel changes. Yeah, well, Ceylon uh, Edwards is serving a suspension for uh, Montana, and they don't know when they're going to get him back. He is their point guard, and they're really depending heavily on him. So with that being the case, Anthony Johnson has been asked to take on that role. Young man out of Stadium High School in Tacoma, Yakima Valley Community College, is really a two, but he's playing the one, was playing very well, scoring a lot of points. So if he can handle that point guard position, a lot of the grizzly success is going to be dependent on how well he plays. Johnson out of Stadium High School down in Tacoma. And then there's the case of Ryan Stoddicker, who is from Lake Washington, right here in Seattle, a junior shooting lights out from beyond three. Absolutely. Rated uh, number three percentage shooting from behind the three-point line in the country right now. Uh, went over in the last game, but he's a very good outside shooter. When he can get it going, he can really stretch the defense and make the Grizzlies a lot more effective offensively. The Grizzlies in the loss to Portland State needed the first four minutes. Get four minutes into the game before they were to score. They got behind 10-0, and the Huskies are hoping to get the same start against Montana here today. We'll be back with a tip in a moment on FSN. Well, the Washington Huskies get set for non Pac-10 play. They'll wrap it up against Morgan State earlier this coming week and then on to Pullman to take on the Washington State Cougars. So let's take a look at the lineups this afternoon as Washington will host the Montana Grizzlies. For the Grizzlies, it'll be Anthony Johnson, Ryan Stoddicker, the guards, Brian Qualley, along with Jack McGillis and Jordan Haskett, the forwards. For the Huskies, Justin Dentman and Isaiah Thomas played very well together. Darnell Gann in the middle with Quincy Pondexter to forward and John Brockman leading this team in scoring and in rebounding. The coach of the Montana Grizzlies is Wayne Tinkle, who took over for Larry Kristoviak now in his third year as the head coach. His record even 37 and 37. And for the Washington Huskies, Lorenzo Romar. Head coaching stops at Pepperdine St. Louis University in his seventh season at Washington. The last time his club coached against the Montana team was back in the NCAA tournament when they beat the Grizzlies in Boise. Then coached by Larry Kristoviak. And of course, uh, a very good year for the Washington Huskies that year, led by Brandon Roy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've seen a lot of the Pac 10. Big Sky matchups here in the last couple of weeks. This one here basically being the last one. So a good test for the Huskies as they get prepared for Pac-10 play. And Montana's going to try to recover from the loss to Portland State uh, last week. Well, the fellows that will be keying on this afternoon include that terrific three-point shooter, Brian Stoddicker, who we talked about. It's interesting this uh, Montana team is up among the nation's leaders in three. At 70, at the number 22 in the nation, a three point percentage. They're also number 25 in field goal percentage. Jordan Haskett has over 1,200 career points, 12th all time in the history of Montana. And Justin Detman, 343 career assists, 140 steals, fourth and third all time in the history of the University of Washington's program as well. And as I mentioned, he and Isaiah Thomas really clicking as a duo out there. Yeah, but well they're really going to need the leadership from him being a senior in the backcourt. Uh, he's been playing very well, been very consistent, been really good when he's off the ball. But for Montana, Jordan Haskwood, he's a four-year starter for Montana, was a first-team all-league player as a sophomore, I don't know, mentioned last year, and they really need him to step up and play big also. Huskies Francis coming off that big win over Eastern Washington, 83-50. to 50. 
Led that game by Broccoli with the 17 points. Thomas and Denton chipped in with 13 apiece between the two of them, 26 points and eight rebounds. And they were all over the court literally. Our officials this afternoon are Michael Reed, Bill Kennedy, Melvin Landry. And we're set for basketball here at the Bank America Arena in Seattle. Good crowd on hand here, making their way slowly but surely through the Seattle streets. Still choked with a lot of snow. Montana will win the tip, and Anthony Johnson will bring it up. And right away, we'll have to see how Johnson handles those point guard duties. This is a, a new role for him. Johnson had been coming off the bench and leading Montana nearly 13 a game. This is Stoddicker. 16 to shoot for Montana. Stoddicker in the corner being watched closely by Bentman. Good Husky defense. Brockman slides over to prevent the baseline attempt. And then Pondexter is free to seal and grab the rebound. And he comes up limping and grimacing as the Huskies come down the floor. Brockman's pass, or the pass from Thomas under throw to Brockman. Tips it into backcourt. Pondexter with the recuperative power of the leather. <laughs> Swings it outside to Denton. This is Thomas with a jump pass. Nice look inside of Brockman. Changed the shot to a pass just like this. A well, good recognition by Isaiah Thomas to see that Brockman was open on the post. And as always, John going to do his work early. So when he gives low post position, it's usually a layup. Johnson feeding over here to the near side. And Jack McGillis may have taken steps. Out on touch to Quali. Good Johnson pursued now double team by Brockman. They try to trap him at the sideline. Finds an open man. Good ball movement inside, but unable to finish. Brian Quali, Husky, steer it the other way. Thomas, the hesitation dribble drive, but he turned it over. Well, two point blank misses for Montana early, so they're getting some good looks. And they actually have a size advantage up front against the Huskies. The Huskies are, are not a very big team on their front line. So Montana just needs to settle down a little bit and they continue to get those looks that get pretty good shape. Yeah, Quali 6'11, Francis, and Haskett at 6'9. Uh, this is Jordan Haskett with the basketball. Montana very deliberative in their offensive approach. Here's a three point shot. One of what will probably be many. Driving off it up by McGillis. Long rebound hauled in by the Huskies. Leading to a Thomas run to the end line. Thomas and Johnson know each other very well from their days battling in Tacoma. Isaiah at Curtis High School and Johnson playing at Stadium High School. Of course, there are a number of connections between this Montana program and uh, the local area here. Yeah, you have six kids on the uh, on the Montana roster that are actually from the state of Washington. Uh, so yeah, there's a, a huge presence here. A lot of people here to support Montana today, and even with the coaches, a couple of them have connections to the Seattle area and Washington State as well. Detman shooting 48 percent from the field, 74 percent from the line. Steps up and drills two. He is third on the team at scoring as we enter this ball game. The 11th of the year for the Huskies behind Brockman and Thomas. Brockman leading him at 16.8. Thomas 13.7 and Dentman 13.5. There's a three up and in. And again, Jordan Haskett getting the open opportunity. He's one for two out there in the early goal. And they, they really need him to play well. They're, with uh, Elton Johnson not being available, they need him. And here's where Brockman will have an advantage over the height just as quick as caught it in deep. Spins to the hole and leaves it in. Yeah, well he gets down there and establishes such good position that uh, he leaves himself in a spot where he can usually get good looks. Johnson comes back with a solid stroke in transition. And the Grizzlies within one at 6-5 Washington. Montana drops back in uh, what appeared to be a zone, sort of an amoeba matchup. A double Dentman in the end line. Haskell had hands on it. Pauly picks it up. Johnson will steer it up. And into the lane. Finding it up a man. Stoddicker drills the three-point shot. And that's a great job by Anthony Johnson to find Stoddicker spotted up on the break. They need to get him going early because, as we said, he's number three in the nation in three-point field goal percentage shooting. So if he gets it going, uh, he'll help Montana a lot because he can really stretch the defense. 
Detman cross court with from Brockman missed the three. Long rebound Anthony Johnson. Pull up jumper got it and look out the Grizzlies are gathering momentum. They lead at 10 6 and they're off to a terrific shooting start hitting four out of seven. Well as you mentioned they're one of the better shooting teams in the country and if Johnson gets more comfortable in that role we already know that he can score if he can distribute the ball a little bit uh, it helps him quite a bit. Thomas drives into the zone and found a crack to let in. And defensively now it, the Husky backcourt poses a lot of problems for a, a lot of teams with, with Dentman and Thomas and when they bring Benoit Overton into the game so you have to keep them from getting into the lane off the dribble. Reach on Thomas as Johnson wheels into front court and a timeout called with 1547 left in the opening half here in Seattle and it's the Montana Grizzlies leading the Huskies 10 8. College basketball on FSN is brought to you by Quest. Get in the loop and join the community that's changing the way people connect by Sterling Savings the perfect fit bank and by Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino the entertainment capital of the Northwest. Welcome back everybody along with Francis Williams Kevin Calabro here at an afternoon start on a Sunday as the Huskies meet the red hot Montana Grizzlies open up 0 for 3 since then 4 for 4 Francis. Yeah when well, they get a 3 from Haskell they get a 3 from Stodaker uh, Johnson. As we said in the new role but we know it can score pulls up for a little jump shot there at the elbow and as you can see 10 8 Grizzlies here early. Montana's shown us a couple of different defenses 2 3 they went to 1 2 2 the last trip down. Huskies have been able to get in to the paint and score. Here's Pondexter good overplay hustle play tips it ahead front court to Overton on the run has a step on Stoniker and finishes strong. Well they bring Benoit Overton into the game and he usually changes the complexion of the game with his defense. He's going to put a lot of pressure on the basketball and uh, usually gets the Huskies revved up on the defensive end. That should help him too because as we know he's had some trouble finishing, finishing those plays hasn't it? In each of the last three games he's missed pretty much a wide open layup so it's good that he got that one to go. Haskwood a three this one sails short and out of bounds it'll be Washington ball. Grizzly shooting four of eight from the field the Huskies are four or five. And Haskwood maybe a little anxious on that shot a little early in the shot clock. They don't have the, the depth of the personnel to go that deep into their bench with the Huskies here. So they're going to have to be patient on the offensive end and uh, take good care of the basketball. Overton fakes from three comes up the high screen from Matthew Brian Amening. He's in the lineup now with Pondexter and Brockman up front. Great interior passing. Brian Amman getting some space and laying it up and in. Some terrific little passes in tight quarters. Yes, the interior passing there was very effective by the Huskies. And Brian Amman, who just checked into the game as well, has just been off the charts here recently for the Huskies. Uh, and has really given Coach Lorenzo Romar some added depth up front. Coming off the uh, 9.7 rebound performance. And some terrific hustle plays in the big win against Eastern Washington. This is Johnson for three. In and out. Pondexter with a rebound. Hugh wants to push it. Move it. Looking early for Brockman. Move. Work the perimeter. Detman trying to break his man down on the dribble and a foul call. Matthew Brian Amity coming into this game 20 for 25 from the floor in his last three games. Had a 23.12 rebound performance, but you just see here he's big and strong. The interior passing by the Huskies there, very effective. And once he gets the ball around the basket, similarly to Brockman, uh, he's very tough to stop. Haskwick will step out, and Derek Selvig, a freshman from Dawson County High School in Glendive, Montana, will step in. Brockman on the inbound. Turnaround look. Rebound Stoddicker, who hails from Kirkland, Washington, just across the lake. 1358 remaining in the first half. The Huskies leading the Grizzlies 12-10. Good hustle play by Overton to get a piece tipped it out of bounds. Grizzlies take it with 25 to shoot. And you'll see the Huskies continue to put a lot of pressure on Johnson. And again, depending on how well he handles that pressure, is going to be uh, a huge story in this game for Montana. McGillis will bring it in bounds. Little jump stop action. Justin Holiday with some outstanding defense using his length on McGillis, forcing him to get off a very weak shot and out of bounds. Huskies have already used nine players at their bench. Yeah, they'll or go, in total, I should yeah, say. They'll, they'll go deep in, into their bench. Overton and Holiday coming off the bench along with Brian Amity. And now Elston Turner with the ball on the end line. 
And Turner now will come to the width of the court and get an open three. The Grizzlies didn't track his path over there. He was wide open. Well, that time the Grizzlies stayed in the zone, and Nelson Turner had the ball in the far corner. As you, as you mentioned, they lost track of him, and he knocked down a three from the opposite corner. 9-0 Husky run over to Jan finishes on the pick. Husky defense now breaking down the Grizzlies and Wayne Tinkle needs a 20 second timeout to regroup over there on the Montana bench as suddenly the Huskies take a seven point lead. Yes well if Noy Overton comes into the game it's a 10 8 Montana lead and since he's entered it's a 9 0 Husky run and again his defense is a uh, very a very big part of the Husky game plan. He was a starter last year but when he comes in the game really gets things started for them on the defensive end with the ball pressure that he can apply and Elson Turner. Probably the best shooter in the program, although he's just a freshman, runs the baseline against the zone, gets a good look from the corner, knocks down the three. Vinoy Overton coming into this game shooting 29% of 10 of 34. And that's something obviously he has dwelled a little bit on, and that's sometimes a self perpetuating problem when mentally then you dwell on the fact that you're not shooting well. But those two plays. Could kickstart and it could come at just the right time for Mr. Overton. Yeah, just, just get out there and just, just play instinctive basketball. He's a big time scorer. When he was at Franklin High School in Seattle, led him to state championship. Uh, just been overthinking it a little bit. Just play your game. Johnson in that point guard role. Now his fourth start of the year. They swing it up top to McGillis and he throws it out of bounds. That one whistle wide of the target. Intended down there was Derek Selvig on the end line. The Grizzly turnover will give it back to Washington. Leading by seven. And I see McGillis is being uh, subbed out right now. He's a transfer from Oregon State. So having played in the Pac-10 and coming back here to Washington, another Pac-10 school, you know he wants to play well. I think he's pressing just a little bit to start the game. Darnell Gant will come to the top to get it. Swings it over here to Holiday. Great delivery inside to Matthew Brian Ammoning, and he will lay it up and in. And now his teammates are looking for him to the rim. He's so long, he just seals the defenders, doesn't he? He's got those big, broad shoulders, and he's, he's kind of deceptive with his strength. I mean, he's a big, strong kid and has a good base. Come on, Darnell! Montana hadn't scored in four minutes. Hold it back! That's one rebound, a rare rebound you won't see Brian Ammon get in this ball game. Tipped away. Gant there to pick it up. Overton sails the other way. Hamming makes a great catch in the open court gets off a shot off balance beautifully done and he has opened up three for three. He's kind of showing us the whole package he has good hands he has excellent footwork and for a big guy he's very effective on the on the break he can pass the ball in traffic and he'll catch it and he'll figure out a way to finish. And an eight for eight game against Texas Southern earlier this year that we did he's shooting 73 percent on the year. Stonaker misses. Brian Hamming with a rebound. Steers it ahead to Overton. Scoops to Turner. Turns and whistles up a three that won't go. And the ball jabbed out of bounds. Last touch by Brian Ammony. It will be Montana ball. And Brian Ammony, Noy Overton pushing the ball on the break. He spots him. Brian Ammony, you see him just stop. Survey the defense, lay it up off the glass, showing us the whole package. Huskies up 21 10. Welcome back Husky fans and Grizzly fans 21 10 Washington right now getting the better Montana with 11 28 to go here in the first half it's time now to take a look at a GMC professional grade brought to you by Routers Auto Center in Olympia. Matthew Brian Ammon coming off the bench providing a big spark for the Huskies kind of showing you the whole package of all the things that he's capable of doing as we mentioned he's 20 for 25 in his last three games averaging 16 points and eight rebounds and for him to be able to come off the bench and give them some added depth up front is a, is a huge plus for the Huskies and since he and Benoit Overton have come into the game it's a 15 0 run and the, Hus the Grizzlies have not scored in the last 445 16 2 advantage for the Huskies Francis in the paint. Or as our good buddy Yubi Brown would say, in the painted area. Painted area. Yeah, there's a look at Darnell Gant. You know, the thing about the Huskies, and Gant falls into this category, is we've seen them now over several games, as they all have fallen into their given roles. You, you very rarely see these kids on an individual basis break out of the mold, trying to do something they're incapable of doing. Yeah, and I think the first three games, that was their problem. But after their. Uh, their loss to Kansas and their loss to Florida. <laughs> you really saw a difference in this team and figuring out what they were going to have to do 
to have a chance to be successful. Kansas, of course, blew them out in a much more competitive game against Florida the next night. There is a ball grabbed by Holiday, but he is tied up by the Grizzlies. That's Kyle Sharp, who's in the lineup now, 6'7 and 220 senior from Hollister, California. Foul's going to be actually called on Holiday. Third team foul of the Huskies, and Holiday's first. Brockman's back in for Washington, and Michael Taylor, the sophomore from Brewster, Washington, steps in. Transfer from uh, Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington. And, uh, Sean Stockton is in the game also from uh, Ferris High School in Spokane. That name might sound familiar. That's yeah. the nephew. Where have I heard that? I've heard that Stockton name. That's John's nephew. Ah, okay. Brian Allen backs in, sweeps the left hand hook up there, wouldn't go. Tipped out of bounds off Husky, or I should say off Grizzly hands. There's a look at Mr. Stockton. 58 and 0. Junior and senior years in high school at Ferris. Back to back state championships. On the inbounds, Turner will take it. In deep. Matthew Bryant Avenue. Husky's able to shift it to Holiday, then on to Brockman, attacking the rim and a foul, and Brockman will shoot two. Brockman is just so big and strong down there and he's always so good at just establishing the low post position knows how to use his body he'll he'll jump in he'll do whatever he has to do because he seeks out the contact now if he can continue to improve from the free throw line that'll be an added plus for the Huskies as well because last year he shot 51 percent from the line and that was uh, they lost a lot of games down the stretch because of poor free throw shooting. Both the UW men and women are back in action Tuesday night on FSN. Coach Tia Jackson and the women's team take the floor against number 22 Kansas State. And then the Washington men face Morgan State and the Bears catch both games starting at five right here on FSN. A double hit. Montana now has hit four of 15 from the field. They have not hit in any of the last eight attempts. Either. We saw Coach Romar earlier talking to Darnell again about bodying up on his man. Because anytime you put your hands on the dribbler out front, it's, it's been very clear all year that they are calling those fouls. And uh, those are things you have to do to keep the opponent off the foul line with those little ticky tack fouls. Jordan Haskett working with it over here to Stockton. Thomas D's him up. Swing it to Michael Taylor. Upend it. And he walked with a basketball. Taylor, as you mentioned, transferred from Eastern Washington out of Brewster High School uh, up in the northern part of the state of Washington. Was just an all everything performer baseball, basketball, you name it. He was a big time high school athlete. And uh, here at Montana, they're really counting on him heavily to provide some stability at the point guard position once he gets acclimated with the program. Nice two man play Turner and Brian Amity Turner feeding the post Amity double kicks to the corner for three and it's a 19 0 run for Washington big time run for the, for the Huskies and they have Turner shooting the ball as well as he is from the outside. Uh, that's something they've kind of been waiting for from him all season long. Haskwick will tee up a deep one. Brockman with a rebound. Thomas now running the break. Quick burst to speed, lays it up. Brockman trailing, comes down with it into the clutter, and he is right in the middle of that. <laughs> and the ball tipped out of bounds. And we'll see how they decide to go here. It appears to be Washington basketball. You can see the bandage on Brockman's left thumb. He actually cut himself opening a Christmas gift. With a hunting knife, it apparently had some plastic twist ties on it, and he was trying to pry the twist ties loose, and the knife got loose. And three stitches later, he's got bandages on the left thumb. And you know what the present was? <laughs> uh, they finally got it open. It was a hatchet. It was a hatchet. Yeah, somebody yeah. gave him a hatchet for Christmas. Well, I think that uh, last loose ball there. I think we can officially call that a scrum, as everyone was yeah. down there trying to gain control of it. But Brockman, as we talked, I mean, he's. Amongst the leaders in the Pac-10 in both scoring and rebounding, and he's the heart and soul of this of this whole program. And uh, they missed him for the one game when he hurt his ankle. He came back and had a 17.5 rebound performance against Eastern Washington. 
So getting him healthy and getting him back on the courts is uh, much needed because January 3rd, the showdown against Washington State, they have to come out with both barrels blazing. And obviously Washington State's got to be uh, disappointed at the outcome uh, against LSU yesterday. Uh, Cougars had a seven point lead midway through the second half and then and to use their own words they ended up giving LSU the basketball uh, Taylor Rochester in the paper was quoted as saying we just gave them the basketball down the stretch in the last five or six minutes. That would have been a very big win for them to gather momentum down there in Bantam Rouge. Take a look. This is what the officials are looking at here. Actually this was that two man play we talked about and the Turner three pointer out of the corner. Yeah well just a great job of Turner just playing fundamental basketball of relocating after he made the post pass. But here on this uh, this scrum we don't know who, who the ball went off of and the officials are trying to decide who's uh, should be in possession of the ball. And from that angle we, we obviously can't tell there's a referee standing right there on the line on the baseline so we'll see what they come up with. No, that, that looked like a touchdown to me. I thought he broke the plane down. I didn't see Tinkle throw out the red flag, so <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Juan Dexter will bring it in bounds. <laughs> right hand, a quick drop step, sweeping hook up over the near seven footer. Won't go. Turner had the rebound, but it's quickly stripped away. Montana will bring it the other way, trailing by 15 early, 25 to 10. The Huskies have taken the starch right out of the Grizzlies. 8.51 to play in the first half. The biggest problem for the Grizzlies right now, who on the score on the floor is going to be able to score for them? Hasput is a pretty good score. And uh, you see Taylor pull up for the three there. That's not really his game. And that's the whole problem with Ceylon Ailes and Taylor being out of their lineup with the suspension. It really puts guys in roles that they're not comfortable with and uh, not what they were being expected to do for the Grizzlies. Turn a nice pass. Look at Brockman come across the body of the 6 11 Brian Quali to bank it in. I've been impressed with the Husky passing in this ballgame. They've been very unselfish and very smart in their selection of passes. Quali with a putback, not there. Brian Ammoning will leave it for Thomas. And Isaiah Gildy maybe not giving the ball up on the court to Brian Ammoning, who appeared to have a, a nice path to the basket. Yeah, I think he had a couple guys open. I, he had uh, Turner on the wing as well. But so it goes. It's been all Huskies here in the early going. Very unselfish play to lead to a 17 point lead early. Washington opens up a 17 point lead on Montana with 758 to go here in the first half and uh, Washington has had complete domination of this Montana team friends. They have well Stoddicker hits a three here from the corner for Montana and we'll see Johnson come down and pull up and shoot a little elbow jump shot off the break and at the 16 10 mark that's the last time Montana has scored in this basketball game and in the result. Huskies 27 Grizzlies 10 with 7.56 to go in the first half. Johnson will bring it out of backcourt met by Isaiah Thomas. Montana extended way out to the hash mark. Hasquit walks with a basketball and it's not going to get any better for Montana. They have not scored in the last eight minutes and they're over the last 12. And the Husky defense, you know, they recognize that they have some, some issues at the point guard. We, we saw them do this earlier in the season against Pacific when they were having some point guard issues, just really making it tough for them to enter the basketball and make, make them make some decisions. Five Montana turnovers. Well, no rust on this Husky team. Only two practices since uh, the 23rd of December. And one of them was yesterday. In fact, they, they appear to be better, in my opinion, and, and have not missed a beat since uh, coming off that huge win over Eastern Washington, 83-50. And that man in particular, Matthew Bryan Amino. Yeah. Well, rest always helps. I mean, they, they were pretty busy there earlier in the month of December, so they're able to get some rest. And, uh, you know, again, getting, getting Brockman healthy in spite of the, the thumb injury helps them a lot as well. Rebound controlled over there by Jordan Hasquit, shoved by Brockman. 
And a foul called on John Brockman. Muskies have played just two games in the last 22 days. They were both blowout wins. 646 to go on the third. Nice look inside. Johnson to the posting. Jordan Haskett. I always have to look. Remember the guy taking the ball out of bounds. First Montana points in eight and a half minutes. Brockman working his way inside. A double foul call. Haskett and Brockman. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Hold on. No, intentional foul. Beg your pardon. And this is on Haskett. He uh, he got hauled down the last trip down the floor. Brockman shoved him out of bounds. So those two really grinding away at one another. And so Brockman will shoot. Well, you're talking about two veteran players, both four-year starters for their programs, both big physical kids. But John Brockman has always had that ability to get under his opponent's skin. I mean, he's, like you said, he's physical, always seeking out contact, doing whatever he has to do to get the position that he wants on the floor and he's so big and strong that it's a lot of times it's tough to keep him from doing what he wants to do. Always moving. He must wear you out too. Perpetual huh? motion. I mean you Perpetual do not motion. get a break. Holiday will bring it in bounds so the two free throws and possession now for the Huskies and a chance to expand on the lead. They're up 19 their largest lead. Holiday enters to Brockman. Spins baseline, but walk with a basketball. You see that Montana chooses not to double any of the post players uh, when, they, when they get the ball in the post. They haven't doubled Brockman. They haven't doubled Brian Amning. And uh, maybe forcing the Huskies to shoot the ball a little bit more from the outside than they have might be a way for them to see if they can work their way back into this ball game, but not keep giving them point blank layups. Lorenzo has used his bench liberally. Right now he's got Holiday in there. The team of the starters. And these games are great opportunities for the bench guys to work with the starters and create a rhythm and some familiarity in their game time, or, or I should say game situations. But only Overton getting set to come in for Washington. Johnson fouled and he'll shoot. It's the third foul on Isaiah Thomas. Thomas is having uh, some problems with, with Johnson, and uh, that leads to that third foul. Johnson's an aggressive offensive player, and uh, if they're able to get uh, Montana's able to get Elgin Taylor back from that suspension, you can see them being a pretty good backcourt point guard, two guard. Good hustle play. Pondexter tried to uh, deflect it off a Haskett, but instead hit Brockman. Montana will take it. And Washington needs a timeout with 549 remaining. In uh, the first half, and Washington leading here 31 13. Washington will wrap the out of conference schedule up on a broadcast that we'll have for you when they meet the Morgan State Bears. And the snow will be sufficiently moved or at least rearranged <laughs> until how Morgan State get through for the game on Tuesday. Tip at 7 30, and then the game uh, we've been waiting for for a while when Washington will travel to Pullman to meet the Washington State Cougars. We'll get a chance to see how both of these teams fare as uh, they get into conference play from Pullman beginning at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon, January 3rd. Then Stanford on uh, the 8th, that first packed in home game for Washington on January the 8th, 7.30, Tim. For the Morgan State game on uh, Tuesday and the Watch the state game. Both those games be seen on FSN. Overton, the overplay, has another pick in another bucket. This time he sails in and slams it. And that's what we've been talking about regarding Overton. That's what he used to do when he was in high school. And earlier this year, for some reason, he was going to the basket, trying to lay the ball over the front of the rim or not use the backboard and just going ahead and flushing it down when he's wide open. But three for three on the layups today. And even though we're talking about layups, that's big news for him in Washington. Uh, you know, he started 26 games as a, as a freshman. And coming off the bench is a different role. 14 to shoot. For Montana. Husky swarmed the ball. Holiday, ooh, he's wrestled out of bounds. And knocked into the stanchion. Well, Overton's forte is defense. 
And he gets into the passing lane, gets out an open floor for the dunk. And again, he changed the entire complexion of the game when he entered the game with Montana having that 10-8 lead. He changes the complexion of the game with his defense. And that's what the Huskies are looking for for him for the entire season, especially when they get in the Pac-10 and play against some of the better guards in the country that are in the Pac-10. 20 bench points now for Washington on their way to a 20-point lead, 33-13. Five minutes to go, first half. Brockman mid-block. Single coverage, turns, sweeps up the hook, looking for foul. Won't get a look at Holiday. Leap out of the clutter with a rebound. To get it back, sends it out to the guards. Dentman to take over. 24 to shoot. Huskies reform their offense. Pondexter has a spread lane. We'll drive in there, missed it. Good follow, but it came over the top. And a pushing foul call. And this will be on Pondexter to his dismay. Eighth team foul. And Montana will come the other way to shoot free throws. The Huskies are a very good offensive rebounding team. Very quick to the ball. A lot of quick leapers, a lot of guys with a lot of length, long arms, and they've been crashing the offensive boards all season long. And again, that's just an example of where Pondexter has raised the level of his play. Because one of the things that he's been doing is really going to the offensive glass. And although he was called for a foul that time, uh, that, that's one of the strengths of his game, and he's starting to learn to play to that strength. Vassie Banny will step in now, a junior from the Ivory Coast. Went to uh, Salt Lake Community College. He's 6'4 and 215. Stepping up to the lane, Jordan Haskett. First free throw lands with a thud, but it rolls in. Haskett hails from Missoula, Montana. That's his hometown. Went to Sentinel High School. Oh, Huskies on the rebound, but they tip it away from one another. Jabbed outside to Haskett. Good read by Matthew Bryan Amening with the pick. Inside they go to Holiday. Oh, he's blocked. Met at the summit. Good defensive anticipation by Kyle Sharp. Banny overthrows Stoddicker. That goes out of bounds, and Washington will take it back. And the Huskies have dominated Montana here in the first half, holding Montana to five for 23 shooting. The guard play is so important. And, uh, you know, one of the uh, big sky opponents that Montana will be facing, we saw the Huskies play at Portland State here a little bit earlier. And they have such good guard play, and the Huskies were not able to speed them up the way they're speeding up Montana. And again, not having your point guard on the floor is a big factor with that, but you've got to be able to adjust to the speed of the game. Well, let's take a look now at our Les Schwab League leaders. Washington averaging 74.4 per game, Stanford 76.4, and Cal at 76.2. This is also a plus 13 rebounding margin, which is uh, second in the nation. That's crazy. We talked about strength of schedule as well, and we'll get into that in the second half. More in depth. Turner, nice steal. Nine turnovers on Montana. Matthew Bryan Amity backs, whirls, leads in with the right shoulder, backs off his defender, couldn't finish. Wild elbow thrown, no contact there from Bassey. Pretend to play in the first half. Washington is blowing out their opponents in two of the last three games. Of course, a tight one winning here against Portland State 84 83. Long rebound, but only over to after. Diving. But it's jabbed into the hands of the Grizzlies. And Justin Tenton applied some wood <laughs> on Kyle Sharp. Sharp will get two. Well, that's the type of play you're, you're, you're going to need. I'm pretty sure the Huskies are happy about everybody getting on the floor there, along with uh, Johnson, but Dentman. The no layup rule is in effect. He got up. So Sharp to the line. 
and again he rolls it in Montana now shooting three of five from the line but from the field five for twenty four twenty percent shooting Washington has uh, now forced nine turnovers. Well, Jordan Haskett's been the only resource for scoring. He has seven, and the rest of the team with just eight points. Knifing in again is Vonoy Overton. He is upended and fouled, and he'll shoot two. Playing with a lot more confidence after getting a couple of buckets to go down. You see Overton probing the defense and finding the seam there and trying to get to the cup and drawing the foul. Overton, the sophomore from Franklin High School. We mentioned a starter last year. This year, coming off the bench, that can be a, a difficult transition for somebody that started through the course of his well, heck going all the way back maybe to eight or nine years old, right? Yeah. Well, you know, as you said, he started those 26 games. Isaiah Thomas comes to the program, and uh, the Huskies choose to start him. But I think if Overton accepts his role, he's probably going to play just as many minutes, if not more. And he may be more valuable to the team coming off the bench as opposed to being a starter because he can affect the game as we've seen defensively and he's a capable scorer when he's playing with confidence. Stoddicker from Kirkland Washington handling. Kyle Sharp and giving way to Anthony Johnson from Tacoma missed the shot rebound ricochets right to Sharp he'll lay it in. And right now Montana will take a bucket any way they can get it. Anyway. Dentman jump stops in the paint. Right Amity backs in, put it off the knee. Stoddicker the save. Johnson has a man ahead, trying to avoid Overton. He put it off his own thigh, goes to get it, he lays it in. Well, back to back buckets for Montana. It's been uh, quite a while since they've been able to do that, but the Huskies have to be careful of not getting complacent with the big lead, which is something they have. Had a problem with with some of the uh, opponents that played here early in the season. That went off the curl again. Boy, he attacks the rim beautifully and draws the foul. And so Darnell will shoot two. And Darnell Gantz, another player, redshirted last year, who uh, has really accepted the role of just coming in and setting solid screens and just doing what the teams needed. But you see that turnover by the Huskies, and Johnson finally tracks it down, is able to get the ball to go in the bucket. And again, that's the first back to back buckets for. Montana since about the 16 minute mark of the first half. Gant is a long drink of water. He is 6'8, 210 out of Los Angeles Crenshaw High School. Uh, do they have a statue of Marcus Johnson in front of the Crenshaw High School main entrance there, you suppose? And they've they've they had should, they've huh? had so many great ones. And of course, Marcus <laughs> probably at the top of that list, but they've had so many, they can't retire numbers or anything like that. They'd run out of numbers. One thing we talked about during the break is uh, the Huskies in a game like this, leading 36 19, would be nice to see them get to the free throw line and work in uh, a game environment at the free throw line where they have definitely not been a very strong team over the last couple of years, including this, unfortunately. And you're going to need to improve that area of your game if you're going to be competitive in the Pac-10 and live up to that preseason billing we talked about before the game. Yeah, without question. And, uh, we referenced the, the Portland State game again where the Huskies had a 16-point lead late in the game and it seemed like the game was over. Portland State comes roaring back and it becomes a one-point game and they did have to knock down some free throws coming down the stretch to get that one-point win. And Justin Dittman, the senior, who had some problems at the line, stepped up and knocked them down. So they need to have that carry over uh, as they get prepared for Pac-10 season because the free throw shooting is paramount. It doesn't matter at what level. You got to be able to knock them down. Dettman shooting 74 percent, and Elston Turner at 75, but the team at 61 percent. Bassey misses the second. Brockman the rebound. A minute 29 to go in the first half. Montana on a 7-3 run over the last two minutes of change. Over to nice determined drive. Brockman the follow, just shy. And Montana on the run out. Anthony Johnson. And that's a walk and another turnover. And there's a situation. Johnson has the ball in the break. Earlier in the game, we saw him find Stoddicker, who was spotted up behind the three-point line for a good-looking three off the break. He had Stoddicker spotted up again, but that time he missed him. Yeah. 
Denton spins in, dumps it outside to Overton. Ready hands, nice pass to Gant. That's a terrific little move. Couldn't finish. Brockman throws out the off arm to grab the rebound, and a foul called on Montana. <laughs> Boy, Jordan Haskins getting worse to that of that He's battle. Getting worse. <laughs> But uh, that's John Brockman's game. He's going after every rebound on both ends of the court with uh, with a lot of fervor. Second foul on Haskett, and it sends John Brockman to the line. He missed that Portland State game. That's the game uh, he had sprained the ankle the, the night before in practice. Recently passed Caleb Shrimp for 11th in the University of Washington career scoring. And his fourth on the all-time career list in rebound. Huskies by 16. Stoniker, he's been quiet. Dentman locks him up. Overton is great. Drives the other way and slams this one with a right hand. So he has had three of his four buckets have come through, steals, and then drives the other way. Yes, and that, again, that's the strength of his game. He's a ball hawk. The ball's loose on the floor. He's there to pick it up and take it the length of the basket. And again, we're talking about a kid that's missed some wide open layups in the previous games, and now you just see what a little confidence will do for your game. Overton with uh, 10 points. That is a season high for him. Stoddicker mishandles the basketball. Good ball pressure by Dittman. Overton picks it up. No one's going to catch him. And that's just confidence to go and, and knock it down. Averaging 3.8 this year. Overton with 10. Quali, the big 6'11 youngster at the line. From Williston, North Dakota. Sophomore this year. 19 and 6 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Washington on top, 38 21. Washington has won five in a row. They will meet Morgan State on Tuesday here at home. Dentman. From Brockman. Stoddicker knocks Dentman down. And Justin Dentman's going to get a chance at three. Well, that's just kind of indicative of how the first half has gone for Montana. You know, they finally get the game slowed down a little bit, get a couple of buckets, they get to the foul line, still trailing by 17, but at least the pace of the game is kind of slowed down to where they feel that they can play. And uh, now with seven seconds left in the half, they foul Dentman on a three. And uh, gives the Huskies a chance to go into the half with a 20 point plus lead if he knocks down all three. Number 74 percent as we mentioned. Leads his team in free throw percentage. Pondexter will come in to get Brockman here in the remaining seven seconds remaining. Justin fourth on the career assist list behind Will Conroy and Chet Dorsey. Chet the Jet. Buddy Eldridge from Castle better look out. He's about to get past. <laughs> That'll end the first half of play. It was all Huskies. So the Washington Huskies lead by 20 at the end of one half here in Seattle. 41-21. Let's send it out of the College Hoops Northwest Studios. Nicole Zalumis and Lamar Hurts standing by. Well, the Washington Huskies took charge to lead by 20 at half over Montana. And a very well played first half for Washington uh, in a number of respects. Back with uh, Francis Williams, Kevin Calabro on hand. Coaches love to talk about defense, don't they, Francis? <laughs> the defense of the Huskies was stifling in the first half. Well, it really was. And anytime you can have a guy come into the game and affect the game on the defensive end, you've got to be happy with that. Of course, we're talking about Benoit Overton. Uh, Benoit, who's come off the bench for Washington, had an excellent first half. Ten points, two assists, no turnovers in 11 minutes. Was able to get out on the open court and finish some plays that he's been struggling with earlier in the season. But a good half for Washington. As they shoot 50% from the field, 50% from behind the arc, 11 to 14 from the free throw line, only turned the basketball over five times. 
Well, when you get an easy buckets like that off of uh, forced turnovers, you can expect the shooting percentage to be high, and that's exactly what Washington got. Some outstanding shooting as they shoot 50% in the, the first half. And look at the free throw shooting. 11 of 14 for a club that's uh, at 71% in total, and uh, actually less than that. They are 61% as a team, but uh, here this afternoon, 11 of 14, 78%. Montana 7 of 28. They are 5 of 10 from the line. Washington now rebounded Montana 19 21. They beat him on the glass, but I'm sure Coach Romar, a point of emphasis for him in, the, in his halftime speech was the fact that Montana was able to get nine offensive rebounds. And uh, that's something that the Huskies definitely can't afford to do against any opponent. But as the quality of the opponent uh, goes up, they need to make sure that they uh, keep that number to a minimal number. Leading scorers, Washington got 10 from Vinoy Overton, as we mentioned, a season high for him. Brockman at 9. And uh, the Grizzlies, well, they were led by the seven points of Anthony Johnson. Inside pass, knocked away and controlled by the fallen Pondexter. Possession arrow will indicate Washington basketball. Washington's length and quickness is just really posing a lot of problems for Montana. Even when they try to go to some of their post ups, and the Huskies are not doubling them on any of the post ups, but they're just so good at choking off the passing lanes and beating the cutters to the spot. And, and this has really been a tough goal for Montana the entire day on the offensive end. Now it looks like Montana's going to extend their defense. As Stoddicker will pick up uh, Pondexter, I should say Dentman in backcourt. And uh, Johnson will cover Thomas, 94 feet. Gant, baseline Jimmy, not there. And the foul called inside. Well, it's on Jordan Haskett who continues to battle with John Brockman in there. Those two have been going at it all day long. But uh, he has to be, you know, be careful because they need him on the floor. Haskett has to be on the floor for them, and that's his third foul. And we're only 30 seconds into the second half. Denman crossing over, drives inside on the big man and laid it in beautifully. Well, Montana got caught in a, in a switch, and so Denman uh, understood who he had guarding him and just took the ball right to the basket. Thomas outside with hands on Johnson and a foul. And before I could get it out, it was, it's important that they that Thomas not pick up that fourth foul. Uh, he had to sit a lot in the first half because he picked up three early. Now he's got four. We're only 53 seconds into the second half, and he more than likely is going to have to come out of the game. And Lorenzo's going to leave him on right now uh, with a minute gone by here in the half. High screen set and a foul called as uh, Pondexter and Gant were out there trying to hedge and force the ball wide. And I, I wonder do the Husky coaching staff realize that Thomas has four fouls um, because there's no one at the table. It looks like they're going to leave him in. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe they just want to see if he can survive it and maybe try to teach him a lesson. Make a play. Oh. Thomas out there checked by Johnson. Elevating. Gant with a rebound. Thomas drives right in there. Setting up Brockman for the rebound putback, but stripped as he elevated. Quality with a rebound for Montana. And a nice dribble drive and finish. Jack McGillis. And McGillis will step up with a chance at a three point play. Well, McGillis is a, is a real athletic player. Actually, from Montana, started out at Oregon State, but he's good enough and athletic enough to get in there and do some things uh, against this Husky team. And again, just being able to get some confidence, just to be able to see the ball in the basket can go a long way. Fouls on Darnell Gant, and that is the third on Gant. Third team foul on the Huskies. McGillis with a three point play. Get on the screen to the end line. Stop.
Stoddicker steps through the screen. Then with circles. Haskett with the rebound, but uh, the fallen Denton may have had a piece as he was on the end line. This would be Montana ball. Denton had a clear path to the basket. I think he got a little cute with that one. Going, going for the finger roll. I mean, he he didn't have anyone there. Again, use the backboard. Get the ball to the rim. Use the backboard. You're a low throw. You're not going to throw it down. Just uh, stay fundamentally sound. There, yeah, McGill stepped out of bounds. Washington will take it. On the 13th turnover, in charge to the Grizzlies from the Big Sky. They've already begun their conference play. They stand at six and six on the year. Their first conference outing was not a good one. Losing uh, to Portland State big. And in that game with Portland State, as you mentioned, they lost by 27. And similarly to Washington, Portland State has three really good guards that they can come at you with. And uh, just like it has posed problems for Montana today, they had uh, really no answer for the guard play that Portland State threw out. And a little Dominguez kid just tore up Gonzaga. They didn't have an answer for him. Really did. Quali. Brockman tips it away from the big man. Gant tried to force it in. McGillis the other way. By Johnson trailing. Nobody on him. And nobody closed out on him. He got off the jumper. And the Grizzlies now within 17. Steal the ball. Pondexter comes back to get it, but he juggled it out of bounds. So the Grizzlies take charge. And we're, and we're, we're, we're three minutes in, and right now the Huskies are playing like they have a, they had the 20 point lead at the half and did not come out with the intensity with the fire that they started the basketball game with and the lesson they should have learned against another big sky opponent that they they played here at Portland State when they had the big lead and then let them get right back in the game and just like that it's gone from 20 to 15. Stocker hits the fallback jumper 43 28 a 7 0 run for Montana to make things interesting and Lorenzo Romar. Wants to reevaluate his group here with a 43 28 lead of 15. We'll be right back with 1644 left in the second half. Well, the opening moments here of the second half have gone decidedly to Montana. They have pulled back within 15 points. And Francis Williams with 1644 to go in the second half. That uh, was cause enough for concern that uh, Lorenzo Romar needed a timeout to reevaluate some things. Yeah, well, a couple of ways the way the Huskies started the first minute of the game, uh, or the second half, I'm sorry, Thomas picks up that, that fourth foul. So, uh, you know, that right there kind of shows you how the half started for Washington. Grizzlies report card here, the first year was 1901. Big Sky titles, 12 of them, six regular and six tournament. Seven NCAA appearances. The last was in 06. They lost to the Huskies in, in 05. That was the last time that Lorenzo Romar's teams played Montana. Huskies lead the all time series 40 to 9. Grizzlies extend their defense. Still in the zone. On Dexter to Thomas, eight to shoot. Isaiah turns the corner but fouled on the floor. McGillis got him with a bump. So Montana gives the Huskies a little different look. Kind of going to a little half court trap. See if they can uh, cause some turnovers and make, make the Huskies just have to earn what they have uh, coming their way. I mean, in the first half, they were getting everything from point blank range. So again, Montana just needs to do some things to make them have to, to work to get some points. And uh, again, if they can miss some shots and get some rebounds, maybe they can get some easy buckets on the other end. Montana has a little more bounce in their step now. And now you see they choose to double the post, which is something they didn't do in the first half. But you pay the, you pay, <laughs> you pay the price by giving up the three. Did that time. Thomas has five points on the afternoon. Washington three of five from beyond the arc. Really had their way in the paint against Montana in the first half. You didn't see a lot of perimeter shooting. Brockman overruns the play and fouls. And that's the second on John Brockman. And a timeout called with 15.42 to play in the second half. 
Washington leading by 18. A moment ago, Francis Williams talked about Montana collapsing on the post. Well, in the first half, Brian Amity and Brockman, between the two of them, were 7 for 13. Montana chose not to double on the post. You see that time, they choose to double-team Brian Amity. He kicks it back out to Thomas for the wide open three. So Montana's hope is that if they continue to do that, maybe they'll miss some of those threes and uh, they can get on the glass and maybe get some buckets going the other direction. Washington shooting 47% for this game. 18 point lead for the Huskies. Gillis for three. Thomas with a rebound. Nifty move to get by the lunging Johnson and then can he finish? You bet he can. A little twirl of the left hand. And that's a uh, that's great hands by Thomas because I think he lost control of that ball in the air. He's going to the basket and regained control of it and was able to kiss it off the glass. Stoddicker outside. Dentman up on him. Dentman's done his homework. Stoddicker an excellent three point shooter but he's been a non factor this afternoon. Sharp trying to angle to the end of the line but Brockman riding him and a foul on Brockman. Thomas going in with the big guys and pulling down the rebound and again nice open court ball handling gets into the paint goes to the basket and you can see that he just kind of lost control of it there just for a second you see it kind of slip out of his hand but he was able to get it back and again kiss it off the glass and he did a good job of surviving because he just played five minutes with four fouls so that that was a pretty good stretch there for, for Thomas Brockman picks up his third foul and Montana will bring it in Stoddicker draws the double five sharp popping out. Uh-uh. Askett had it stripped away by Brockman, but it rolls right to Montana. Brockman another attempt at it. Turner picks it off the shoe of Johnson, and Washington's in business with Benoit Overton. One dribble enough for Brockman. Counted if it goes, and the foul. Brockman back to the line. He pinned Haskett down in the basement that time. And Hussey's going back to their bread and butter. This is a nice job. Again, Brockman does his work early and gets his low post position established. And uh, just turns it at right shoulder and lays it in. Again, Jordan Haskett on the, on the end of getting that foul. Been battling Brockman all day long, but Brockman just a little bit too big, a little too strong, a little too savvy. Haskett is out with his fourth foul, Francis, and then will come Quali, who's 6 11. And doesn't seem to be a guy that can hold position against Brockman. We'll see how that one rolls. Brockman rolls it in. He has 12 and 9 on the afternoon. And Michael Taylor checks in for, for Montana, and they go with a three guard look. And this is the first time we've seen Johnson off the ball. So now with Stoddicker, who's an excellent shooter, and then Johnson, who's an excellent scorer, you see Montana now trying to go for some offense. Taylor looking to enter the quality. Jackson turns to the rack. Nope. Nice follow in there by Sharp. Brockman, by the way, in that last rebound has a double double now. His 49th overall and his seventh of the year. Elston Turner in the lineup. Matthew Bryan Amatine backing in. Blocker charge appears to be a block. It'll work against Montana. And that's the third foul on Sharp. Number 22, Justin Holliday. Bri Brian Amening, when he gets the ball on the post, you know, again, we don't know if they're going to double or not, but he was real patient and waiting to see if the double team was going to come. And when it didn't, he went to work. Turner for three. Two fouls by Amening. Up and in. So Brian Amening will get a couple of rebounds there and a bucket. Moses Malone imitation. <laughs> yeah. Stoddicker on the reception of the dribble handoff. Johnson in the weave up top. Difficulties with Overton. Taylor in and out. Ryan Amening with a rebound. Having another sensational afternoon. He got 10 points and six boards. Brockman has his shot snuffed by Quali, but a foul call. Well, Brockman has passed 
Christian Velt and Doug McClary on the all time rebounding list and is right behind Doug Smart with 998 rebounds. It's been a great career for, for Brock yeah. Neal. As long as he stays healthy, obviously he'll pass Smart, the all time leading rebounder in Washington. And as we look forward to 09, it'll be interesting to see where John Brockman will be this time next year. I mean, yes. we, we, last time we did a broadcast, Francis, I think we both had him in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I think, uh, you know, given the fact that we've been around and we've watched the NBA for a long time, I think there was definitely on, on. a spot on a roster for this one. Here, John yeah, well, we talked about a couple guys that he compares to favorably. I think, uh, you know, Paul Millsap may be yeah, a guy. So. Uh, Big Baby might be another one that he uh, compares to. But uh, he, he just has such a motor. And, and, and he's he's so competitive. Yeah, I don't know that he would be a first round pick, but I think that there's a spot for him on the roster somewhere. I, I think you're right. Ability to run, good footwork, terrific hands, obviously. Knows how to score the ball, mid range and inside, for over 1,400 points, career scoring leader. And uh, the rebounding, two time Pac 10 rebounding leader. Obviously, length is going to be an issue for yeah. Brockman, but uh, there are ways that you can offset that with heart yep. and hustle and smart. Smart. We've seen a number of scouts here. We know that. Oh yeah. yeah. You can always use a player like that if nothing else in practice yeah. push, to push the other guys. Because if you're not working, even though he's undersized and maybe not as skilled, it, it'll you'll be exposed if you're not putting in your work. Huskies break the full court trap. Holiday walk. That's a good call. Our officials today are Michael Reed, Bill Kennedy, and. Melvin Landry. Montana chooses to uh, apply a little pressure, which is going to open up the court for Washington. But uh, the Washington cannot kind of be stuck in between gears. Are we going to attack the pressure? Are we going to pull back and set it up? And uh, just what Montana wanted, they created a turnover. NBA with hands reaching in and a foul. This will be the seventh. Team foul on the Huskies, and so the Grizzlies in a bonus situation with 12-28 remaining in the half. The Huskies have won five in a row coming into this afternoon's play. They stand at seven and three. Quali has the rebound, pumps it right back to the shooter. Let's go. Brian Ant, a great look over to Galisi. Oh, was it a dunk or a lay-in? Slipped out of his hands. I think he was attempting to dunk it. They got it back. Let's see what happens here. Oh, no. Well, he's able to stay with the play and tips it outside to Holiday. Well, I'm looking at Lorenzo's face, and I'm not sure what that look is right now. <laughs> oh. Follow up there by Sharp. Well, we mentioned earlier about Overton and that series of plays. It's kind of way his season is gone until he had a, the great run in the first half. But you have to be consistent. You admire the hustle, and he's out there working hard. Lorenzo's got that look of a father. His son has come home after 11. I told you, be home by 11. <laughs> Welcome back. 54-32 is our count. Washington leading Montana. Watch this one again, Francis. Oh, I've got it. No, I don't. Well, Benoit Overton going back to his early struggles of missing layups and dunks. And he's out there again. He's, he changed the complexion of this game with his defense when he came in early and had a, an outstanding first half. Um, but as we mentioned going to break you've got to be consistent you have to finish those plays and uh, you know because those are little things that lead to big things and in a close game against a, a more formidable opponent those are the types of things that are cost you. Overton explained to Isaiah Thomas what happened there. As he, he relives that last couple of seconds. So Overton and Thomas are both on the bench. Dentman is in to run the show. Joe Wolfing on the seven footer steps in with uh, Turner, Brian Ammoning, and Holiday. Watching an infirm command of this one, 54 33. Wolfinger trap, skip pass to Turner. 
Hammond and double to Denton. Oh, they find Wolfinger, leans in, and that would have counted had it gone. Probably the act. Joe Wolfinger in the game for the first time. You know, he's a seven footer, good outside shooter. Mm -hmm. He had an opportunity to come in and play in the uh, game earlier in the season when Brockman was injured. And he really didn't come in and do a very good job, just didn't really seem to be ready. But this is a guy that the Huskies are going to need when they get in the Pac-10 play. And this is an opportunity for him to get some minutes and uh, show Coach Romar that he can depend on him. You have a big part in non shooting foul. Tipped out. Foul called on Washington. Side Wolfinger. And Montana will come back to shoot free throws. Quali will step up there to shoot. Brian Qualley is uh, from Williston, North Dakota, 6'11 and 255. Wolfinger and Brian Ammoning depart, and will come Pondexter and Brockman now at 11.26 here of the second half. Well, it appears anyway that the Huskies are heading to a six consecutive win. And uh, Francis, we talked a little bit about strength of schedule before the ball game started, and I guess there are a couple of schools of thought when you Lay out a schedule. Uh, the Huskies' strength of schedule is what compared to the other 300 plus programs playing D1 basketball? Well, right now it's 68. And of course, it's early. Um, no one's really getting into conference play as well. Some conferences have got that big uh, UConn Georgetown matchup coming up here. But uh, it's, it's still early. But the, you can look at it two ways. The Huskies have decided that they're going to look for confidence. To get some wins, let a lot of guys play, get some experience, and let that be the way they prepare for conference play. Some schools like to get out and play a tougher schedule because they know that it is going to affect their RPI, and if their conference isn't as strong, their out-of-conference schedule may be the way to get them over the hump if they're not able to get into it through conference play or winning their conference championship. And you made a good point during the break. Uh, when you get these wins, you're not winning necessarily against that team. You're also winning against the conference, which plays into the RPI. Exactly. And then the, obviously the stronger the, the conference showing, the, for example, of Portland State. Right. Well, we the more use it that. reflects on the big sky. Yeah, we could use that as an example. I mean, Washington played Portland State. They beat them. Now, their favorite to win the big sky, well, Portland State is getting ready to play Baylor, who's in the top 25. So if Portland State was to go and beat Baylor, let's say, for example, well, that makes that win for Washington against Portland State look even better. Uh, but then Portland State beat Gonzaga also. Mm -hmm. So they already have that feather in their cap that, okay, we beat them, they beat Gonzaga. So it's a, a quarter of the equation, the strength of your opponent's opponents, but it all factors in when we start getting the march and you're on the bubble and looking at teams that get in and those that don't. Bad inbounds pass, turn. Paces the dribble into the lane, try to reverse it. Excellent play by Holiday, following with the flush. Well, that's a great job by Turner to create that turnover. The rest of the Montana players did not follow the play and really, really hustled when that steal was made. But Holiday did, and uh, he benefits by getting the dunk. Hondex had a rip, then it was taken back from him. Johnson out of Tacoma down the left side of the lane and he drew Holiday off his feet for the foul. Defense has been solid for the Huskies. They've held Montana to 27 percent shooting. Yeah well the defensive effort has been pretty strong the entire day except for maybe the first couple of minutes of the second half. But the Huskies length. Huskies length and athleticism and, and tenacity has just really been a little bit too much for Montana to overcome. Four fouls on Holiday, and immediately he's dispatched to the bench. Matthew Bryan Amening and Isaiah Thomas will come in as Turner goes back to the bench as well. Huskies at 10 team fouls now. And Montana to shoot the rest of the way with 10.28 to go. Thomas scoots up the floor, quick burst of speed into the lane. Brockman was there conveniently. Ryan Ammoning a tip jam missed it then got it back but brought it back into traffic. And then stolen away by Kyle Sharp of Montana. Johnson the putback. Ryan Ammoning the block. Big man bounces to Pondexter trying to get up to the glass. Volleys it keeps it alive to Brockman and a foul. Well, we talked earlier about Brian Ammoning. 
And you see him clear that rebound and get the ball in the open court and make a good decision uh, with the basketball. He's got a, a, a wide variety of, of ways that he can affect the game. You see him block the shot. He picks up the loose basketball. This is a good, good job by Montana to stay on the offensive glass where they've been strong all day. But once Brian Ameny blocks that shot and gets it in the open court, you see that he can handle the basketball. And uh, he's, he's a very talented player both around the basket and in the open floor. Grizzly substitution, Derek Selvig, the seven foot freshman, steps in. 54 to go in this one, and it's been all Husky. 57 35. 950 to play. Off the screen, Johnson dribbles it deep. Jump stops and misses over Pondexter. Brockman has another rebound. He's already had a double double tonight. Down the floor to He's looking for Pondexter to go to the baseline, but Quincy pulled up. Husky with a 22 point lead. You see, Coach, uh, Coach Romar. He understands that these guys have to under, they have to understand that they've got to play 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. They got to got this team by the throat. They need to go ahead and just put them away. But this sloppy play, he's not tolerating it here in the second half. And you see if the guy makes a ball handling mistake, they come right out of the game. Overton is in now with Thomas. Denton goes to the pine. This is Stockton, and he hits a little pull up Jimmy in the paint. Sean Stockton. John's nephew, Pondexter to the baseline, a foul. Sean Stockton off the bench, freshman from Ferris High School in Spokane. Just a little runner right there in the lane and knocks it down. They're looking for him to be their, their point guard of the future, as we mentioned earlier. Ferris High School in Spokane, 58 0 his junior and senior year, back to back state championships. Played with uh, D'Angelo Castro. Castro at Washington State. Jared Karstetter is a wide receiver at Washington State. But uh, very good high school basketball team. I mean, just very efficient. Always had four or five guys on the floor that uh, could all shoot and run and catch. And uh, they dominated basketball on the high school level in the state of Washington for two years. Pondexter up there knocks down a free throw. Pondexter two or three from the line. Huskies have now used 12 players. Pondexter three points, three rebounds. Artem Wallace in the lineup now for Washington. Turnaround jump shot offered up by Selvig. Blocked but a foul. It's on Brockman. Fourth foul on Brockman. Thomas is playing with four fouls, and Holiday is on the bench with four. 56 to play in the first. I should say in the second. Half, it's been a very physical game. You know that. Between uh, Jordan Haskin, who's over on the Montana bench, and John Brockman, they really got it rolling in the first half. Brockman will come out. Selvig hits the free throw. Thomas skip pass to Overton in the corner. It comes to Pondexter. He dribbled right into a trap, but uh, it will work out because a foul's called in pursuit of the loose ball on Stockton. Well, the zone for Montana has actually been somewhat effective in the second half. It has slowed the, the Huskies down a little bit. Uh, Pondexter wants to put the ball on the floor and head for the basket. Nothing wrong with attacking the seams. When you see the help coming, uh, you got to give the ball up and make it to the first. Uh, First available player to just keep the ball moving against the zone until you can break it down and get an open look. Pondexter has a career scoring average of 10 a game. Hit the first, missed the second. Salvig up top. Matthew Brian Amling with a wingspan of 7 feet 4 inches. He is all over Selvig. Ball tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Washington. 22 point lead for Washington. They were up 20 at half. Here's the 
Here's Benoit over to down the open court. Surveys the scene, gets to Pondexter. Spins with a mid range offering. Good second effort rebound. He's fouled. Quincy back to the line. Quincy being, a, being aggressive, first move was a pretty tough shot, but one of the strengths of this game is going to the offensive glass, and he goes and gets his own miss. Gets back up to the bucket and draws that foul. And again, the Huskies plus 13 rebounding margin against their opponents, second best in the country, and they again continue to pound the glass. Although today, Montana State has done a good job of their own of being on the offensive glasses right now. That number is up to 12. FSN brings you more Northwest Hoops action tomorrow night from Corvallis, Oregon. Oregon State Beavers play host to the Seattle University Red Hawks. Coverage begins 6.30 right here on FSN. Stockton with a blast the other way. The pull up, and his cast is up and in. A two in a row for Stockton. He's very strong. I mean, coming in as a true freshman, one of the reasons he'll be able to play is because he is strong enough to, to handle the physical play at this level. Thomas, man, did he show a lot of patience there with that little change of pace dribble. Got into a gap and hit the nice mid range shot. Pondexter with it. Huskies really breaking down Montana, holding him to 27% shooting. They've turned it over 16 times. Pondexter elevates. Selvig ascends for the rebound. Stoniker from three has not been a factor. Yeah, hasn't been a, he hasn't had an opportunity to get very many good looks. Good job by Washington of understanding the scouting report and knowing that they can't let him be out on the three-point line by himself, 58% from the floor or from behind the arc for the season. Walk whistled on Wallace, and to continue that point on threes, Montana, one of the top 25 in three-point percentage in college basketball, but they're 2 of 14 this afternoon against a Husky team that leads by 22. Sixty two forty to count Washington leading Montana by twenty two along with Francis Williams Kevin Calabro on hand. Well the Washington Huskies have shot thirty one percent here in the second half forty two percent for the game they were at fifty percent and fourteen and twenty eight in the first half and led by twenty forty one twenty one. So Montana's defense has played a little better part of the. Uh, Changing uh, at least what Washington wants to do offensively, but it hasn't made any impact on the scoreboard. Stoniker missing. That's primarily because uh, while they played better defense, Francis Montana offensively hasn't been able to put anything together. I mean, they've had some looks, but they've just not been able to put the basketball in the hoop, and they've even struggled from the foul line where they haven't shot the ball very well either. They're uh, 12 for 21 from the foul line. Six to 22 from the field, Montana in the second half. Stockton comes down with a loose ball. Stockton to Malone. No, that's Stockton. Ball tipped away, and it's Thomas the other way. Isaiah to lay it up and in. And that's kind of been the story of the, of the day for Washington. So many uh, tips and, and balls that they've been able to make deflections and get out in the open court when they've recovered the loose basketballs, and those just led to runouts or either easy buckets on the other end. Taylor gets an open peak. Nope. Matthew Bryan Amening with a rebound. Thomas sails the other way. Oh my. Little hesitation drive to lay it in and the foul. And Thomas to the line. Well, when he when he has a chance to get in the open court and kind of do his thing, that's why Washington recruited this young man so so heavily. You see just a hesitation dribble and a stock that is left at the at the top of the key thinking, where did this guy go? And he's so tricky with that left hand. Right behind the back, a little disappearing act. Thomas, six of eight from the field, 13 points, his first free throw attempt of the game. Selvig with the rebound for the Grizzlies with 5.42 to play. And for Thomas to still be in the game with a little over five minutes left after picking up his fourth foul mm -hmm. at the 19-minute mark, that's a bit of a victory for Washington, too, and for him to be able to stay in the game and still be aggressive and uh, not have fouled out. Miguel is missing. Vanoy Overton with a rebound. He'll separate. Loses. Brian Amening with the dribble. Off the loose ball. Missed it. 
Dottaker will toe the line for three. And that time he drilled it. Now that's a three point shooter for you. He pulls up on a one on all break <laughs> and shoots the three. He's two for five from outside the arc. 66 43 count. 506 to go in the second quarter. And uh, Stoddicker's had uh, he's had a busy holiday season, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has. Well, got some uh, business done. Got a little business done. Uh, proposed to his to his girlfriend, and from what we hear, she accepted. They're going to get married sometime in May of 2010. So it has been a busy holiday season for the young man. But uh, Ryan, as we talked about, Lake Washington High School over in Kirkland was actually a teammate of John Brockman's on the AAU circuit with the, the Friends of Hoop program. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a very formidable team that they put together with, with Brockman and uh, Micah Downs, Martel Webster, uh, a, a lot of good kids on that team. But you see Stoddicker pulls up and shoots that three. That's probably the best look he's had all day since he got the wide open look early in the first half from the, from the opposite corner on the other end. But uh, Mitch Johnson at Stanford was also a part of that team mm -hmm. uh, that they all played on. And uh, so, yeah. Ryan and John go way back. Well, they're looking at that uh, replay to determine was it a three or was it not. Yeah, I don't. Well yeah. outside the line. Yeah, from where we were, it uh, wasn't any question. They're going to give him three, as they should. So far, held under a season average. Six minutes left. Make that five even now in the ball game. Thomas for three. Stoddicker with a rebound. Ooh, Stockton nearly had the cross court pass to McGillis picked off. Brockton trying to fan it over to Holiday, but it's intercepted by Selvig and a foul called. Well, take a look at the Washington players on that Montana roster. Anthony Johnson started the game. He's from Tacoma. Stoddicker over in Kirkland. John Stockton, Eastern Washington. Michael Taylor from Northeastern Washington. And two guys red shirting. Young man from Rainier Beach. Yeah, and Diggacy McCoy Boo. And um, Matthias Ward from Gig Harbor. They're going to red shirt this year. But uh, talked to Coach Tinkle before the game. And he's. He's pretty happy with the guys from Washington that he has sprinkled throughout the roster and uh, really high on the two freshmen. Overton on the high screen and pop from Wolfinger. Thomas goes right into a crowd. Muscles through it, makes the next pass to Wolfinger, and he finishes at the cup. Yeah. So good strength to be able to hold possession of that basketball and get it to Wolfinger. Nice back cut. McGillis, the reverse, and he's fouled. He heads to the line. Well, Isaiah Thomas still in the game with those four fouls. Finds a seam in that zone, but good help defense actually by Montana. Maybe it should have been a, a tie up, but he shows good strength. And he's able to hold on to the basketball and find Wolfinger. Nice back cut by McGillis. And uh, Stockton actually has come in the game and, and been pretty solid as, you know, as a freshman here at the point guard position. So he may be earning himself some minutes with the problems that they're having with the point. Of course, they, they hope to, uh, to get uh, Elgin Taylor, Taylor back. But, uh, I know you wanted to say Baylor. Yeah, they hope to get him back. But again, finding someone else that can play that position so Johnson can stay at the two guard where he's most effective only gives uh, Montana some added depth in the backcourt. Overton, Penn Stockton on the screen. And then is upended. Ball tipped away. And last test by Montana out of bounds. 3.39 left in the game. And a timeout called with the Huskies in firm command. 68 47. They lead the Grizzlies. You all had a great and joyous and Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. The New Year's ahead. But I Overton's had an interesting afternoon. Young man's played very good defense. Four of eight, ten points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists, a couple of steals. 
get you recharged. Over to lock the screen, drives into the lane, powers one up. No, grabbed his own miss. Holiday on the wing to Elston Turner. Wolfinger has seven footer and loves to shoot threes. And he knocks this one down. And that's his game right there. Although he is a seven footer, he's more of a, a pick and pop guy than he is a pick and roll guy being tough around the basket. But he can really shoot the basketball from the outside when he can get his feet set and get a good look at the basket. 71 47 count. Gillis to Stockton. Wolfinger over there to deny the post. Bond contact made in a foul as he rams into Kyle Sharp. When you just see he goes and, and sets the screen. When Gillis comes to double. Rotation's a little slow. He gets a chance to square up. It's money in the bank. Scott Suggs will come in now for the Huskies, the freshman. From the great state of Missouri. Holiday will depart. Matthew Bryan Ammon again the rebound as he stumbles backwards. He throws the outlet pass to McGillis. Then McGillis taking it to the rim and it's snuffed. Tipped by the Huskies out of bounds. Wayne Tickle wanted a foul for his man. Well, there will be better days for Montana. This is not has not been their day. But uh, you have to attribute a lot of that to the Huskies. The Huskies have been Pretty tenacious all day long, just a little quicker, a little bigger, a little bit more physical. Brian Ammon comes off with uh, 15 rebounds, 10 points, 15 boards. Is and between he and Brockman, they'll probably keep that rebounding margin about where it was. Suggs comes off the bench. He busts a quick one. 73-48. Two and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Selvig with a step back. Oh, we didn't spot Suggs cruising front court right. Joe over here in deep. Trying to step through, but is fouled, and Joe Wolfinger will get an opportunity at the line where the Huskies have been pretty good this afternoon. Well, they have been. <laughs> Started out good. At half, they were 14 to 18. And uh, they're currently now at uh, 17 to 26, 65%. So, they're going to settle near their team average of 61%. Wolfinger to the line. By the way, that uh, 15 rebound performance by Matthew Bryan Amity was a career high for him. So, he had really starting to play some good ball. We had 23 and 12, which was a career high a couple weeks ago. So now he has 15 his career high. So the ceiling just keeps getting higher for him. And Kyle Sharp, who fouled Wolf, remember that was his fifth foul, so he just fouled out of the game. And Sharp comes out with the six points and seven rebounds. He actually did a good job coming off the bench for them today. Actually, he he and Stockton and, and, and Selvig, although he just threw up that air ball, previous possession Selvig has been pretty solid for them too. Well, it's going to be interesting to see the Huskies in Pac-10 play when they meet Washington State January the 3rd in Pullman. We'll have that broadcast for you here on FSN. As they get underway with the Pac-10 schedule next weekend. Montana on the 3rd. They'll have their big showdown with Montana State, which is also a, a big sky conference game for them. So that'll be a, a big matchup over in Montana. A minute and a half left in this one. 73 48 to count. Holds impatient with 10 to shoot. That's Gant over to Turner for three on the side of the glass. Coach Tinkle's going to get back home, and if nothing else, he can go, go watch his daughters play. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, one daughter, Jocelyn, is one of the top 10 high school players in the country. Oh, wow. And uh, is headed to Stanford. And he's got a freshman daughter uh, over there as well that's going to be an outstanding player. Timeout called, 7351 Washington. And we're just getting started with a big Sunday of college hoops. Up next, the Cavaliers of Virginia battle the Georgia Tech Ramblin' Wreck, followed by Rutgers taking on number one ranked North Carolina. 
And then Texas Tech goes head to head against Stanford in a non conference showdown. Stick around. More Sunday hoops here on FSN. Washington led this afternoon by the 13 points of Isaiah Thomas. John Brockman with 13. He also has 11 boards. That's his seventh double double of the year. And Brian Ammoning with 10 points and 15 rebounds. Minute to play. Overton handling. Splits a pair of defenders. Nice shot. Wolfing off the cut for the two hand slam. Again, the Huskies have been able to penetrate with their guards all day long. Overton, Thomas, Dentman have all been able to get in the paint pretty much at will. Here's Miguelas trying to force his way to the rack and does. Washington up 22. This presumably will be their last possession of the game. Here's Overton. I've seen the coach uh, Tico put Haskett back in the game and really has the starters for the starters with Stockton. So maybe you just wanted to send a little message yeah. that you got to got to play the complete game. Well, that'll do it. So the Huskies win their sixth in a row. They go to eight and three on the year as they defeat. Montana today 75 53 for Francis Williams I'm Kevin Calabro saying so long from Seattle again the score the Husky 75 and the Montana Grizzlies 53.